Beyond the Clef is presented by Director's Choice. Thanks for joining us with Beyond the Clef, and we are here with Stan Malden, who is the Director of Bands at Seguin High School. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. So I saw a clinic that you did a year ago at TBA, and you had a bunch of students there that were just loving you and all about everything you've done. And your clinic was talking about, I just got the tail end of it, and my good friend Alan Hanna was saying that you've only been there for a year. Correct. How do you build the relationships in so intensely and so quickly in a program such as that? We, you've got to build relationships with the kids and the parents. Uh, we're all about community. I live in the community of Seguin. I live in the, in the voting district of Seguin. And so I have a, I have a, direct, um, a direct influence on that and, and a direct impact on our lives on that. But, but really, you've got to understand where the kids are coming from and the, what the kids are into. And then once you do that, then the, the parents will buy into that pretty quickly once they know you care about their kids. So day one, you step in the door, you meet the kids. How do you set that up? First thing we did is we asked the kids, um, if you were the band director, what would you change with the program? So it's my first day there. If you were the band director, what would you do differently? What were some of the responses um, that you got? More, they wanted more discipline. Interesting. They wanted to Coming start from the kids. That's from the kids. They wanted to start rehearsals on time. Wow. They want to be uh, more competitive. They wanted to travel more. It's like, well, that's everything I want to do. Yeah. So the kids gave me permission to make small changes in their program. That's fantastic. So that's a pretty easy thing. I do a lot of leadership, and sure. And we asked that. I was at the University of Houston a few weeks ago and asked that question. Um, what would you want to do if you were the band director? What would you change? And every one of them, uh, we want it. We want to. Um, we want to take the kids who are not part of, of the kids moving forward. How do you how do you motivate the unmotivated? So we've talked about that. How do you get kids involved? That kind of thing. What were some of the responses there? Well, what did you, you talk know, about we, with them? You know, everything. I've, I've got a, a young student of mine, Courtney Lawrence. She now runs the the Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, and. Uh, when she was one of my students 15 years ago, she said, you know, there's always a bottom 10%. So think of that, even in the Marines, there's wow. a bottom 10%. So you've got to learn how to motivate that bottom 10%. And if you can motivate the 10%, the, the won't go to 100%. If you can get the bottom 10% to go, let's say they're working at 50% level. If what we've been doing at Seguin is if you're at, we raise hands, if you're at, how many of you are at 90 to 100%? and two or three hands will go up. How many of you are 80 to 90? More hands. How many of you are 60 to 70? Most everybody. We can't go from 60 to 90. We've got to go from 60 to 61. So if we can just, if you can just give 1% more effort today, then tomorrow we're going to ask for another percent. And after a while, that becomes habit. Wow. Does that make sense? So yeah, if we absolutely. can just get the kids that are at 50%, if you guys will just hustle 1% more, Think about how, how quickly that grows. So that's what we've been doing. Right, right. And so then when you got into the program, so again, how did that affect your middle schools as well and your feeders and when you uh, started to work with them? Well, we're, as I've gotten older, my gig has turned less of teaching the children and more teaching the adults. And so I'm an Eddie Green guy, University of Houston guy. We built sound a certain way from U of H. And um, that's been my gig, is to talk about the junior high directors, how do you build sound? How do you then motivate those kids to sit through the boredom of building that sound, playing an F every day, doing Remington every day, it's, it's, it's boring. So how do you get them to sit through that and match pitch and match color and that kind of thing? Do you have an example of something that you would utilize? Well, for me, for me, we, we really are excited about success. So I've got an F club at the high school band. So the F club is you come to the tuner and you can hold an F for two seconds. And the tuner can't move. One of those Peterson tuners. Yeah. Can't move. The wheel can't move. Now, can you start exactly? Don't let it move for two seconds. Stop and don't let it move. Okay. How hard is that? Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Right. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've got two kids in the F club in a year. Okay, but, the, but when they get in the F club, everybody's clapping. It's like, dude, you're in the F club. It's like, how did I get in the F club? You stopped the wheel. So now every day they line up and play an F, trying to stop the wheel and make it perfectly in tune. 
Wow. That, how dumb is that? Right. It's real dumb, but the kids love it. Yeah, so it's a motivator. It's a motivating factor. Absolutely. We've got a finger buster club. It's, I'm a saxophone player, so it's G-A-G-A-G-A, and we've named these fingers. So this is Fred, and it's his twin brother, Alfred. <laughs> so if you're a flute teacher, right, you're beginning flute, you're teaching your beginning flutes, Alfred likes to go visit Grandma. It's like Alfred, stay at home. It's like put on that G-sharp key. No, Alfred, Alfred, you've got to go home. Right. So I can say to them, check your Fred, and all those little kids will start looking at their fingers. So we're trying to do G-A-G-A -A without Alfred going anywhere. He has to stay at home and move this finger without moving this finger. Now how dumb is that? Real. But then we do it We do it in timing, and it's like, if you can play it faster than me, we'll give you a piece of candy or something. And I can play it really fast. I mean, I, I work on it. <laughs> and so we've got four or five of those finger buster things that we mess with every day. We just try to make it fun. Sure. But now their technique is unbelievable because they've been doing dumb things. Yeah, just to make it a game. Just a game. Yeah. All levels? Absolutely. <laughs> Cool. Absolutely. So you recently received an invitation to play at Carnegie Hall. Correct. Is that correct? A year ago, yes, sir. Okay. And um, and so you've played? We've, your... already, we've already made the trip, yes, sir. And how was that trip? It was awesome. We, we uh, Another team had chosen not to go to Carnegie Hall. I talked with the folks at Director's Choice, and uh, we decided to take that time slot which meant we had about 90 days to raise $250,000. Okay, so that's, that's pretty quick. When did you perform? We what, performed what? in March. March. Not 18, uh, 2017. And so the decision to go was? We decided to go the 1st of November. By the time we right. figured out how to get it all put together, as Thanksgiving rolled around, then Christmas rolled right. around, we really started going right before Christmas. Wow. And so, so here you are in your band hall just before Christmas, and you tell the kids, hey, we're going to make this trip to New York. Carnegie, we're going to take 150 people. Wow. How do, how do you raise that much money? How do the kids pay for it? I don't know. <laughs> but we did. You yeah. know, the, it's, I've done a couple of talks about it. How did you do that? Right. Number one is the goal has got to be so large that it's going to engender support can't do these every year. You know, I can't come back and say we're going to Six Flags. Right. That's nothing. Right. Um, our saxophone quartet at Seguin and our percussion ensemble went to Indianapolis last year. Now, because of the Carnegie trip, the Lions Club got involved, the Rotary Club, the Kiwanis Club, Chamber, the Mayor, everybody got involved with it. So I now know I had a little girl that couldn't quite make her money going to Indianapolis. I did a talk at the Lions Club. I walked out $1,000. Like they want, in Seguin, they want those kids to have those opportunities. Uh, we did a thing in Seguin called, it's called Five Days of Giving. The local radio station, KWED, said, we're going we're gonna to help the band, and we're going to put out pots, you know, cups in the banks and at Walmart and that kind of thing. The goal is to raise $20,000. I thought there's no way in the world we'd raise $20,000. From just cups and just, little change here and there? Yeah, just around town. We raised $28,000 in a week. <laughs> wow. The town came out just like we want. I get emotional. Um, we want our kids to go to New York. We want them to see what's out there. That's special. And so they wanted to pay for it. And so, you know, they were coming up, giving us, I had a guy gave me his last dollar. But it's more important that our kids have the dollar than him. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Another and, emo emotional moment here. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, we have we have those doctors and attorneys that, that here's the two grand, go on the trip. And we told our kids, if you want to go on the trip, I'll find the money somehow. The question is, how are you going to find it? I don't know. But we'll figure it out. And I just don't know. But if you'll trust me, I'll figure it out. We raised more than the 250 that we needed. And so we had a surplus there for a while, you know. And so... Most of the money to send the kids was not student payments? Most of it was not student payments. It would, wow. would, it would be 1000 from the Rotary Club. Now, I did every, every civic organization. I was at every lunch. I was at every breakfast that, that I could get to. Wow. And you've got to have a parent or somebody that is fully engaged and really tied into the community. And every day she's calling me, can you make a breakfast this morning? Six o'clock? Yeah, I'll be there. Can you make a lunch? Well, my band's at lunch. I, you know, it's like skip rehearsing. Come on, they're going to give you a thousand dollars. They're going to give you five hundred bucks. We, right. 
we had small ensembles playing everywhere for the chamber. Christmas, we had them playing parties. We earned that money, you know, $20, $30, $40 dollars at a time. That's great. That's crazy. That's great. That, well, that's fantastic. That sounds like a really special event, a special trip. And, and I bet the kids did, that worked so hard to get that in such a short amount of time got a lot more out of that. Well, you've got a special connection now with those children. You know, that they went to New York. This is this is part of the, the D.C. Uh, the festivals is we got there and it started snowing. Well, kids never seen snow. <laughs> yep. Snowed 17 inches. Yeah. And the uh, director's choice was great about moving us to New Jersey. We got all that worked out in the snow. It's awesome. Wow. You know, what do you do? Because I don't want the kids playing in the snow. Now what do we do? So I'm on the way over there to New Jersey, and, I'm, and the kids are like, can we play in the snow? Can we play in the snow? And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want you playing in the snow. So we had a snowman making contest. <laughs> and we put it on Facebook, and we, we, um, we did it live back home, and the people in Seguin voted for their best snowman. Oh, and wow. so see it was cool and then that helps connect and they can see oh, that you're yeah. having so, fun so everybody there. at home is all connected with their kids in the snow the band director says you have an hour to make snowmen and so I got them in the snow for an hour that's all I have to do is an hour we're not going to play you know and I gave them something to do instead of throwing snowballs at each other and so they all made snowmen we put them in groups different groups so it's not like flutes and it's like we did it by birthdays so it's kids that may not know each other we and this is together. all improv right, right there. One of my assistants, Colin Barry, said, let's do it by birthday. And I was going like, I don't know. But that turned out to be people that, have, that really don't talk to each other. We have 150 kids on the, on, the, on the trip. Some of them are in first band, some are in third band. They don't really talk all, all the time. Right. So that gave them a, a way to interact with each other. And then it gave me a reason to say, time's up, get back inside. So it turned out good. This sounds like a really special thing. And of course, that's not a, a usual experience, getting that last minute, we'll say, uh, uh, trip going. But a lot of these same ideas can go towards the more planned trip, the, the one that's planned a year or two in advance. And so people can go out in their communities, and that's what you're really saying is, have not the every year thing, but if you have that big trip coming along, get out in your community and go find people that want to contribute and want to be a part of that. You have to engender that support in your community and you've got to be a part of the community um, you can't you can't not do those parades right you know we do a fourth of july parade we do a rodeo parade i mean everybody that wants us to play somewhere we play somewhere and uh you know it's, it's uh, some of the guys on our staff are like it's like do we really have to yeah we really have to because i'm going to come back one day and we're going to need that help from our community yeah so we we do Christmas, everything. We, we have a thing in, in Seguin, we have a Christmas parade, and they have a thing called a sip and stroll. It's a hot chocolate contest, and we break out small groups, and it's downtown on the square. So we always have Christmas music going with our band kids, providing that quartets, quintets, that kind of thing. But you've got to be out there in the community for them to come and recognize that you need that money now, you need that help now. Right. And then you got to build a relationship with the community. Absolutely, you're building a relationship with the children, with the adults, and the community. And then once you do that, um, we want to take the kids to Australia. I don't know when that's going to happen, but we want to do that. I want to do that, and I want to take them on a cruise. We've talked about doing a, uh, a trip to Ireland and playing Lincolnshire Posey, and going where uh, where Granger collected those songs and go to those towns. I think that'd be real fun. So those are pretty big trips. So we asked the kids, can we raise the money for that? And the answer, of course, is, well, of course, if we can raise $250,000 in 90 days, surely we can raise $200,000 in a year and a half. Right. So that's, yes, yeah, so we can do that. We're doing California this year. You know, it's going to be another $200,000 trip. But we'll have 150, 200 kids do that. So. That's fantastic. Well, you've, this is your... You just completed my, your second year? Yeah, my third season. Uh -huh. Third season, yeah. So, well, obviously they have a special thing going because the people of the staff are very special and the people that help you out, and obviously your work with them seems like uh, you're really leading them in we, the right we direction. We have great people working working with our kids, but it's not the adults. The kids are really, really special people. Well, they thank, work real hard. So. Thank you so much for being on our show and thank being you. on our program. We'll have to get you on and talk talk to you more about some of these. Love to do it. Thank you items. very much. Thanks and right. thanks for joining us at Beyond the Clef. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Beyond the Clef. 
For more great content, subscribe on our website at beyondthecleft.com. And be sure to follow us on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Facebook.